Do you have a friend or family member on a plane and you'd like to know where they are? Would you like to have a bird's eye view of all the planes aloft in your area? Well, stay tuned and I'm going to show you how to set up Flight Radar 24 on your Raspberry Pi. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about using your Raspberry Pi and Flight 24 radar to track all the planes in your area. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an Amazon Flash Briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. Here's what we're going to be covering in this video. It's how to track airplanes. First, we're going to talk about what is Flight Radar 24. Then we'll go over the list of required items. And then we'll get around to installing it and getting it up and running. If you're not a pilot, you may never have heard of Flight Radar 24. You want to say, what is it? Why don't we go take a look? This is a kind of a bird's eye view. These are all the flights that are currently in the air that have transponders running. Now, you probably won't see military flights, and that's a good thing. But all of the civil and general aviation flights, you're going to see pretty much what's in the air at any given time when there's reporting stations to know where they are. And you'll notice different little hot spots like, you know, here's Kansas City, Dallas, Orlando is going to be, let's see if we can pan over here. Yeah, you get down into Florida and then of course here's, here's the corridor of flights coming out of New York, going to Miami, Orlando. You get the picture. Now, can you get this for free? Yes. But if you set up a Raspberry Pi and give Flight Radar 24 yet another point of being able to see what's going on with the different planes, guess what? You'll get a business account out of this and you'll have even more information. So especially when you've got somebody traveling or if you just, there's a certain flight you use quite a bit, you just want to see how things are going and, and you're just generally curious. This beats listening to a scanner with aircraft frequencies in it. Trust me. I don't know about you, but when I was young, I had a radio over at my grandparents' place. They were just a few miles from a major airport. And it was always interesting to hear the flights take off and land. And that's kind of continued on over the years, depending on what I've had going on or what my curiosity level was. So let's go over what you're going to need to get this up and running. And you may already have some of this. So what we've got to do is we're going to, of course, have got a, a Raspberry Pi. And you, you're used to seeing this one now in a lot of my videos. And I found this nice little stand. So when I'm working with a Raspberry Pi for the first time, before I put it in its permanent case, I can have it to where it's up, where I can get to it, that I can get to the micro SD card over here. I can plug everything in over where I need to here and plus get it powered. This is the USB stick from, uh, I guess, Noelec or Nuelec. That this is what's going to pick up the information coming out of most of the aircraft that's flying today. There's the antenna V, and these two come as a match set on Amazon. There will be a link in the description. And then, of course, we've got our trusty USB or micro USB card reader that we're going to burn the image on to. So let's go ahead and get this installation started. Now you're used to seeing this whole process, but still we're going to go through it from beginning to end. I'm going to go with the image from the folks at Flight Radar so that you don't first have to install Raspberry Pi and didn't do this stuff. It's just is a canned image ready to go. So it says here's FR24. And then we will plug in USB card reader, it found that. So let's tell it to get this media created. Okay, now let's jump ahead. I've already gotten, as you saw in the last step, got the S micro SD card ready to go. We got it booted up. I got the IP address that the Raspberry Pi got from my DHCP server. And 
Of course, now it's complaining because it's, uh, you know, it senses that the, can't talk here, that the password hasn't been changed. So we'll, we'll deal with that once we got things up and running. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to make a little bit of a change and I'm going to tell it not that option, network option host name. I'm going to change this. We'll call it flight radar 24. That way when it comes up with an IP address that it's going to have what it needs. And we'll just go ahead and let it reboot so it'll come up and be ready to go. Okay, it's gotten rebooted. So we're going to go, here, yeah, go up into PuTTY and we'll just tell it to restart session. And it's got that happy. You see now it says flight radar 24. Well, before we actually go to do anything, we're going to get everything plugged in and ready to go. And I'm going to undo the cable and get it plugged in. And I'll just pick one of the spots here and I'll give the antenna a little bit of a height area to work with. So that should be good to go. And then what we will go and do here is we will just do the setup command and hit enter. Okay, enter your email address. Okay, we will, okay, enter your sharing key. Don't have a sharing key, don't have a sharing key yet. So we will just enter past that. Uh, yes, I want to participate in MLAT calculations. Oh, you literally have to say yes, okay. Enter the antenna's latitude, okay. And if you go to a website called latlong.net, and you can get the information that you need in longitude. Make sure the minus gets in there or this is probably gonna have some heartburn to it. Enter and antennas altitude and that's what, what is my elevation. So we will just get that copied in. And that's where if you do this ahead of time, it's going to make things a little bit easier. All right, and would you like to continue with these settings? Yes. And we are using AVR compatible DBT over network. Okay, we'll just go with option one because I believe that's what it said to use for the most part. Uh, we don't have any dump 1090 arguments, which is something you use for, for the data capture. Do you like to enable raw feed on port 2022? Okay, now oh, we'll say yes. Yes, and we want to go 48 hour, 24 hour log rotation. Okay, now it's got that. So what it tells us we need to do is we're just gonna cut and paste here and get everything. Well, now we'll switch over to the website and we'll see what it knows about us. And this may take a few minutes before we see anything. Well, I know we all want things to happen immediately. This is one of those situations when you gotta give it a little bit of time. At this point, when I'm recording this segment, this is the Flight 24, Flight Radar, I'll get it right here in a minute, Flight Radar 24 has been up and running for about two hours. So let's shift over and we'll see exactly what is being reported so far. Now this is getting into the Raspberry Pi itself. Like I said, this is, you know, we're going to the IP address that's on my network, colon 8754. And this is what you see when you get in. So it's already uploaded seven aircraft. It's tracking about eight right now. And we can go over to show track list. Now, sometimes depending on where the, the airplane is, it may not be able to get a call sign on it. Now at this point, a call sign for that one, American Airlines, uh, United, Airlines, I believe that one is American Airlines. Uh, Southwest is like SWA. So this is showing you at the time this snapshot was pulled what uh, it was looking at. So sometimes it doesn't always update when you go to refresh it. So if we go back to showing track list, that should be fairly current. Now, if we go over to the Flight 24 radar site, and if we go to my data sharing which is going to be data history statistics not the one i wanted let's see business my data sharing okay there we go and if statistics okay so we go to my account my data sharing and then we'll click on show statistics 
Now, this is the one that it's going to take a little while to populate, but it shows you when it was up and running. More interestingly is it shows you the direction from when it picked up the aircraft and how far out that they were. So I'm getting about 35 miles out, 28, 35 miles. And this shows you how many contacts it's picked up it's seen in about the past two hours about 63 aircraft and then the hits and the positions that reported so you can see what's going on it's just going to be a little bit different and then you can go to the main flight 24 radar site to get a better picture of what's going on so we'll just zoom in here to Kansas City, which is where I'm going to see. I went a little too far. So it, it's some days there's been more aircraft up than that, but I can remember a few days when COVID first kicked in, the skies were pretty bare. And you see it will even pick out. Let's zoom in here. Uh, it that's a I believe that's a medical helicopter. Thought I saw two helicopters there for a moment. That I believe is one of the uh, air ambulance services that's near the area, and occasionally you might see a police uh, helicopter shown in. So zoom out here a little bit more so you can at least get a better picture of what's going on so this gives you an idea of what you can see and with having just the raspberry pi up and running and that receiver that plugs into the usb port then you get an account that has a value of about 500 dollars a year with all the information that you can get into so it's you know if, if you're interested in flying or just interested in, in kind of what goes on with it then this is certainly a good option to have in your back pocket. If you're watching this on YouTube, you will see videos on the screen that are similar to the one that you've just watched or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.